on a fast. Yeah. 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 He said we ought to fast all week. Yeah. We can't have anything but water. Yeah. He said from 6 a.m. to 12, man, you can't have a peppermint. You can't have nothing. All you can do is brush your teeth and start your day. Yeah. He said, my glory, I shall not yet. And you got to understand that sometimes God won't just speak it to the leader, but he'll speak it to the person who don't even have a title. Right. Yeah. Wasn't until I'm thinking that, on the end, that we were getting ready to fast because we were believing God that God was getting ready to turn it around. Right. But it wasn't until my sister, my baby yeah. sister called me, and she said, Denise, she said, me, God didn't put us on a fast. Right? God wanted for God to heal her. He put us on a fast for us to prepare us for this. It's not because you have nothing else to do. It's simply because this woman of God has impacted your life one way or another. You have to understand that when you're on this walk with God, you're on this walk called life. You have to understand that no, she didn't dot every eye. She didn't cross every T. One thing I can say the second half of her life of telling God yes. I just believe that she meant to every God. I just believe that this woman of God has paved the way for so many. One way or another. Her singing with salvation for years being with them. Coming back home. And she said to me, Pastor, whatever I can do, yes, Lord. I just want to serve you. Yes. Right. You don't find too many people want to serve without a title. I'm right. only going to serve if I got the microphone. I'm only going to serve if you call my name or something. I'm only going to serve if I got to be notified. But I'm telling you, this woman of God served. Yes. She was hurting and still served. Yes. Yes. She was aching and was still serving. Yes. Yes. She was serving. Yes, Cooking is still serving. Yes. Carnage was still serving. Yes. And I said to myself, I said, Demetrius, you got to get it together. Because if she served you while you're hurting, yes. uh, served you while she was hurting, now that you hurting, you got to serve her. Yes. So it's my turn to serve. I, I, I need you to high five somebody and tell them, neighbor, whatever you do. It was just, we were just talking, and it was myself <coughs> in the car. We was in youth convention in Baltimore. It was me, Deanne, my nephew, Kwame, and Rashida. We was on our way to morning glory. And she said, we were talking about the funeral, and I brought it up. I said, if I go first, I need y'all to carry on. And she said to me, she said, we were joking. I said, well, if I go, I need y'all to fall all in the casket and just do it. I need this. <laughs> I mean, just carry it on. I mean, just put it on. I said, put it on the sharpest suit. Don't put it on clergy. I need you to go to my night in Baltimore and get me a nice suit. And she said, Pastor, oh, no, 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 no. Don't talk like that. She said, oh, but if I were to go first. She said, Pastor, if I were to go first, this is what I need you to do. We were all sitting there in the car. She said, if I were to go first, I need you to charge the atmosphere. <coughs> 
She said, I'm talking about dance until I jump in the casket to my body. I said, well, if your body took me off, we'll be out of here. jump until my spirit fell. I said, well, I'm still cracking jokes. I said, well, my sister, you wouldn't, your spirit wouldn't be that you go just to shell. She said, let my shell move. She said, I'm telling you, jump and tell the saints they better carry on. She said, they better dance until the time get better. She said, cry, but keep dancing. I said, well, what am I going to do as a nurse? How am I How am I going to go on without a nurse? She said, pastor, whatever you do, you can't quit. That we didn't have. She says, she said, Pastor, I want you to preach until time is better. She said, I want you to ride back. I want you to do what you do. I said, Well, listen, I don't know if I'm going to do all that because I'll be too crying and snot and all that. She said, Well, you listen, you either gonna do it, I'm gonna pay you a visit. I said, Trust me, I'm gonna preach. I'm gonna preach. So let's give it to the word of God. And I don't need no heavenly business. Amen. Genesis 32. Of the sacred time, I'm going to get straight into the word of God. Genesis 32 and chapter 26. Do you have it? And the word of God reads, the 26th verse, and the word of God reads, Genesis 32 26, and he said, Let me go. For the day breaketh. He said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. I will not let thee go except thou bless me. I just want to move, amen, use for, amen, a topic this afternoon. Father, I thank you for the word, how we behind the cross. But it's all said and done. We promise to give you praise to the Lord. In Jesus' name, I feel God. It wasn't until, used for a topic very quickly, Bishop Brown, it wasn't until June, um, June the 3rd, 2018, for five praises that are catching us. Bishop Smith, it wasn't until she texted me and she said, we were in the process of getting the church established with um, positions. And she said, do you still need a nurse? This was back in June the 3rd of 2018. She said, do you still need a nurse? I said, she said, I'll volunteer. I said, yes, I do. Um, I said, I'll get with you uh, with all that you need to do. She texted me back, and I went back up in it, trying to, and praying for a topic concerning this sermon. And I'm saying to myself, well, where would you allow me to go? Candace, I flipped back on what she texted me. She inboxed me and she said, at 157 overseer, I will preach what she said to me. I believe I'm going to let her preach her own funeral today. She said, okay. She said, Pastor, there are a few things that I need to tell you before uh, I start this assignment. She said, Pastor, I'm clean. I'm sober. I'm refilled. And I'm ready to work. I'm going to preach today. I'm clean. ready to work. Because I believe today that if she were here, she would simply say, I did what I did. Uh -huh. I said what I said. Yeah. But today I'm clean. Yeah. I'm sober. Yeah. Refilled. Yeah. And ready to serve. Yeah. We understand here, Apostle. Oh man, we understand here. But what of the Lord brings us a very interesting point as I haste through here. The Bible talks about, amen, as Jacob started on his way, again, an angel of God came and met him. The Bible says that when Jacob saw this, he exclaimed to God, amen, and he, 
amen, this is, amen, happened at God's camp. The Bible says that then Jacob sent a messenger ahead, amen, of his brother. The Bible says Esau, somebody say Esau, Esau. who was living in the region of, amen, the land. The Bible says that he told them, give this message to my master Esau, humble greetings from your servant Jacob. Oh, the Bible says, until now I have been living with a man uh, Laban. The Bible says, and now I own a cattle, donkey, flocks, a man of sheep, goat, and many servants, yeah. both men and women. The Bible says that I have sent this message to inform uh, my Lord of my coming. The Bible says, and hoping that a man will uh, be friendly to me after, uh, somebody say after. After uh, delivering the message, the Bible said that the messenger returned to Jacob and reported, We, amen, met your brother Esau. Uh -huh. He is already on his way to you. Uh -huh. The Bible says, With an army of 400 men, uh -huh. the Bible says that Jacob was terrified at this news. Yeah. He divided his household along with the flock and the herds of the cattle, amen, into two groups. Uh -huh. Says he, he thought, amen, if he saw meet the first group uh, and attack it, uh, perhaps the other group can escape. Uh, yeah. uh, isn't it amazing how sometimes uh, we in body of believers, we're shouting, but still don't believe God. Dancing, right. but still don't trust God. The Bible said that then Jacob prayed, he prayed, and he said, oh God, uh, my grandfather, Abel, have the God of my father, Isaac, oh God Almighty, you told me to return to your own land. Uh -huh. yes. Bible says he said, he said, you have promised me. Yes. Promise me that I will treat you kindly. I am not worthy. Anybody know that you're not unworthy of God's glory? I, I said, anybody know that you're not worthy of just even having his glory on the inside of you? I called them with so many times. Uh, oh, I mean, man, and it come back to my remembrance that in that missionary, she would tell me, amen, and overseer, she said, I'm not worthy, amen, to carry the gospel. I'm not, I'm not worthy to even serve you overseer. I'm not worthy to even walk with you, pastor. I said, you got to understand, people don't forgive you, but God does.
don't know what she's talking about. I don't need no visits. I'm letting you do it. You've got to understand. The Bible says, Bible says when he says when I left home and crossed the Jordan River. He said, I own nothing except a walking stick. He says, and now or she was at a place that she had nothing but her name. He said, when I crossed over to the Jordan he said, all I had was just a walking stick. She got to the place that she had nothing. She said to me, she said, at that time I was just an elder, and we just family talking to family. She said, me, I'm to the lowest that I can get. I said, that's right where God wants you. Because sometimes you knock you all the way down. Pastor, this means a lot to me uh, that you allowed yourself to come all the way from 
meal. Huh? Come on the way to Greenville just to have Holy Communion. Huh? Oh, I said to her, Rashida, you got to understand. Huh? Oh, that ministry is not just in the four walls of the church. Huh? Oh, but ministry is on the outside of the church. Huh? Come on, Lord, I got to get out of here.
want to take this opportunity as we prepare for the final viewing to say thank you to Pastor Slade, Overton Slade, and Bishop Brown, and all of the clergy for the leadership on today. To the many friends and relatives, they say thank you for your presence today and all the support and the love you've shown this family throughout this time. They say thank you for each and everything you've done to make this time just a little bit easier. And to this very fine family on behalf of Mr. Pope and the entire staff, Basically, Pope, you know, we want to thank you for allowing us to serve your family today during this time. If there's anything we can do beyond these services, feel free to reach out and we'll be right there for you. At this time, we want to prepare for the final view. I'm asking that you do follow the direction of the staff that we can do this as traditionally as possible. And please try to refrain from greeting the family and allow to have them this final moments to themselves because we do have to be to the cemetery at a designated time. One thing I want to say about Rashida, we will miss her, her lasagna, her fried chicken. Amen. And I met her a few years ago through Brother Jeremy, and then we had some great times at her house down on Highway 43. But I think her life is a testament. It's not how you start, but it's how you finish. Amen.